So the first question is that electron beam therapy is useful for CA cervix, brain tumor, mycosis fungoides, RCC. Now electrons are produced by a machine, a radiotherapy machine called as linear accelerator called as Linac. These electrons do not have much penetrating power. So electron beam therapy can only be used if the tumor is superficially located. And that is the key to looking at these questions. Now which of them do you think is a tumor superficially located? I want to look at the choice C called as mycosis fungoides. It looks like a fungal infection but it is not. Mycosis fungoides is a fancy name for cutaneous lymphomas. So skin lymphomas because they are superficially located can be treated by electron beam therapy. That is the answer to this question. Answer is C. Again in the next question the key words was which of the following is not true regarding strontium as compared to phosphorus 32. Not true. Okay. The question is not so we have to find out the wrong statement okay so i want you to look at a table both strontium and phosphorus are used for palliative treatment of bone metastasis in a painful bone metastasis we use them as palliative treatment both of them are beta emitter but strontium has a longer half life of around 50 days phosphorus has a half life of 14 days phosphorus produces beta rays which are more penetrating and has more toxicity to the bone marrow because the beta rays are penetrating more they destroy the surrounding bone marrow as well now let's see the choices were in this question strontium has deeper penetration is wrong it is phosphorus which has deeper penetration strontium has longer half-life is correct strontium is better suited than phosphorus for palliation yes because it has lesser toxicity so b c d are correct statements and this is a previous PGI Chandigarh question which I have created for you so that you get an idea on how the real exam feels like. In the next, you have to look at the right side of the thorax. Right lung will appear hyperlucent to you, more black and that, actually that is not the lung, that is the pneumothorax. The lung is actually the one which I have now marked and you can see the visceral pleural line sign and the lung is collapsed. The mediastinum is pushed to the other side. So we are dealing with right sided pneumothorax. So if a patient has pneumothorax, you know finger clubbing is not related to pneumothorax directly. So the answer here would be, what, what will you get in physical examination? So you have more air, so when you percuss the chest, it will be hyperesurant. So this is how I integrated question, where I have taken x-ray as the basis, but I have kept the basis as general physical examination. The answer is hyperesurant chest on percussion. It is a pneumothorax. Next is an emergency patient with focal neurological deficit. You have to find out on the CT scan what is the finding. So I want to show you the arrow marked structure. This is the left middle cerebral artery. In this patient, the left middle cerebral artery appears hypertense, more white. Why? Because there is a thrombus inside. So as early as 12 hours after onset of stroke, dense MCA sign can be visible on a CT. So it is indicative of hyperacute infarction in the CT scan which is the answer to this question. This is a patient with road traffic accident. We have done fast. BP is normal. Pulse is normal. Vitals are stable. So when you look at this patient's fast, you can see the liver, kidney and the arrow marked area is the fluid in the Morrison's pouch. In a patient with trauma, we considered this fluid to be blood. So there is blood in the Morrison's pouch. There is hemoperitoneum. But the patient is hemodynamically stable. So we have to evaluate and find out why there is blood in the peritoneum, what is the organ which is injured, what is the severity of injury. So you will actually do a CCT here. If the patient was unstable, I would have gone to laparotomy as the answer because the FAST is positive. But in this question, the answer is clearly CCT because FAST positive, vital stable, we go for CCT. This is a previous neat image in this exam that I've given you. There is a destructive lesion in the radius of this patient, but inside the destructive lesion, you can see a linear dense, a very white area that is called a sequestrum. So there is osteolysis with sequestrum, destruction with sequestrum, dead bone. Sequestrum when you see on an x-ray is considered the hallmark pathognomic for chronic osteomyelitis. Well, once you see it, you know we are dealing with chronic osteomyelitis and the arrow mark that white bar like dense structure is actually a uh, sequestrum. In the next image, you can see in front of you a T2 weighted MRI image and a diffusion weighted MRI image. You can see bilateral infarction 
this area is the thalamus so there is bilateral thalamic infarction which is seen hyper intense on diffusion weighted MRI as well as on T2 weighted MR why would you have bilateral thalamic infarction so thalamus is supplied by posterior cerebral artery sometimes from PCA you have a variant artery which supplies both thalami that is called as artery of parcheran so if artery of parcheran is blocked you will have hypersomnolence increased uh, sleeping and you will have bilateral thalamic infarct that you see in this picture so this is uh, artery of parcheran territory infarct artery of parcheran supplies the midbrain and bilateral thalami it is a variant artery not present in everybody if it is involved you see that bilaterality that you see in this question again a previous neat image for you you have to identify the investigation so you, although you can see the urinary tract but look at the pelvis you can see a cannula has been introduced into the bladder and through that cystoscopic cannula we have put catheter we have put catheters which are now through which dye has been put into the ureters and you this is a retrograde pilogram this is not intravenously done this is done retrogradely through cystoscopic catheters the answer here is rgp so i hope you enjoy the cbt experience please give more and more tests many after every test you will learn what you are weak at how what you are unable to recall and you will become gradually better and better in your approach